everyone, happy holidays. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and today I have a really great video for you that I think you're going to love because I created some really substantial and really nice gift ideas that you guys can mass create or just create for the holiday season to gift like your friends, your family, your boss, your dog, your cat, your teacher, whatever you wanna do. You can just really create any of these ideas and gift them. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone on YouTube and looked for DIY gift ideas because I love creating things and come across videos where I'm like, what is that? Who wants that? And why did you create that? Like, I'm sorry, not throwing shade at all the DIY channels because I'm really not. But I really wanted to create a video that had substantial gifts in it that you guys can recreate and someone's going to really love and cherish and hopefully use for the rest of their lives. Don't forget to also subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week on this channel. Brand new content all the time. So definitely subscribe. We are growing so quickly. We're at it like 112,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. And let's just jump on into today's DIY projects. To create this keepsake trinket box, all I used was a raw wood box, some Mod Podge, some Elmer's glue, that black and white paint, and some paint brushes. So what I started off by doing was giving my raw wood box just a nice coating of white paint. And I found this box at Michael's. It was just a couple dollars. You could use the half off coupon, get it for even cheaper. Um, and we're just going to recreate this into something that looks like it's from Z Gallery or just something a little bit more expensive and nice. So I gave it a nice coating of white paint first and allowed that to dry. I did a total of two coats on the entire box just so it was fully opaque. And then what I did next was go in with a coat of Elmer's glue. And I used to do this all the time uh, when I used to DIY a long time ago. I thought it was such a cool effect and I'm bringing it back. So you're just gonna do a nice, pretty thick coat of Elmer's glue, not super thick to where it's like overflowing, but just give it a nice even coating of Elmer's glue across the entire surface. And you're going to wanna work on this in sections on the box. You don't wanna do this all at once because you're gonna need it to dry um, perfectly straight. And then what you're going to do is get a lot of black paint on and just kind of evenly brush it on top of the Elmer's glue. So just go over the top of the glue. Do not try to mix it together more so add more paint than you think you would need. So it just sort of glides over the top of the glue and just coat the entire top surface over the glue. And as it dries, it's actually going to crack. So this is like a four minute drying session sped up. You can kind of see how it cracks a little bit. And as it continues to dry, it's going to crack and crack until it's fully dry. And then you can add a nice coat of glossy Mod Podge, which is really going to give it a shine and finish off your little trinket box. This next gift here is the perfect one for you and your best friend. So I just used a little bit of shiny pink fabric, some black yarn, fabric glue, scissors, and I also did use a sewing machine, but you can use a needle and a thread, and it is inspired by this Urban Outfitters pillow, which I'm going to link below. But what I started off by doing was taking my pink fabric, which I got at Joann's Fabrics. This is a satin crepe fabric. I couldn't find the velvet fabric that they were using, and I just used a Sharpie to sort of map out and just eyeball a heart shape. Uh, and I just love eyeballing everything. If you can definitely like print out a template or create it first on paper and then draw it on if you want to. But I'm just much more of like a just go for it kind of person. So that's exactly what I did. And I just cut my heart out on the fold so that way when you open it, it's perfectly even. And I made this heart about 14 inches tall just so it had a nice substantial height in it. When you cut it in half in the end, you want it to have like a substantial look to it. You don't want the two sides to be super small. And then what I did was recreated that same step cutting out another piece because you're going to need a front and a back piece of fabric for your heart pillow. Once you have both of those fabric hearts cut out, you can just go down the center of the fabric hearts with your Sharpie or your marking tool. You can use chalk, whatever it may be, and just create a random jagged line. This is just going to sort of create that little bonding uh, moment, I guess you can say. And I'm just going to cut both fabric pieces together at the same time with a pair of scissors right down that jagged line, just so that we can then have our two separate pillows that we're going to be using. I used a couple of sewing pins around the entire edge of both hearts just so that it would hold the pieces together for when I sew them. And you are going to want to sew all the way around the outside edge of these jagged heart pieces, leaving just about a two inch opening so you're able to add stuffing in there afterwards. So I just used a sewing machine on a normal, just straight stitch all the way around the edge. It was super easy to do. Mm -hmm. 
I stuffed my pillow actually with a old pillow I had. I just pulled all the stuffing out of the old pillow and repurposed them. Me most asked question on my channel is where do you store all of your pillows? And I'm like, um, I just reuse them and repurpose them. So I'm going to fold it inside out. And once you have your pillow folded inside out, you can actually just use a pencil to like poke out all of the little uh, points or anything like that. And then I'm going to stuff it with some stuffing from an older pillow. And once you have it fully stuffed, you can go and add a seam right to that edge to close it off but I actually just use a little bit of fabric glue to close it off and then that is the two sections of the heart but we are not completely done yet because now we're going to add the yarn portion which is super easy again I eyeballed the entire portion um, of the section I just eyeballed out the word best friends and it cascades across both pillows and you could sew this on if you wanted to but I just honestly thought it would be easy to just quickly glue it on with some fabric glue and I went all the way down adding the words best and then I added the word friends right underneath in a little bit of a smaller font, I guess you could say. And that essentially finishes off your best friend's pillow. This sweater here is probably my favorite DIY in the video and all I used was two different sweaters and some scissors and I also did use a sewing machine or you can use a needle and thread. So what I started off by doing was getting two different sweaters. This Illinois one was from H&M and the Champion one was from Urban Outfitters. It's just an old one that I upcycled. But keep in mind that you, if you're cutting these sweaters in half, so you're thinking to yourself like, wow, why am I cutting these in half? But in the end, you're actually going to get two sweaters. You're going to sew them back together, both of the halves together, and you're going to have two brand new sweaters, but they're going to be repurposed, upcycled, and they're going to be much more personalized and fun. I just love the way that the two sweaters look when they're sewn together. And I also do suggest trying to find two sweaters that are a little bit of a different size because it adds a lot of interest if the hemlines or the necklines don't match up. I think it really adds a visual nice interest to it. So after you cut the two sweaters in half, I used a couple of sewing pins down the center just to hold those sweater portions in place as I was going to go across it and sew it with the sewing machine. Once it's all pinned up, I popped it in my sewing machine and just did a couple back and forth stitches to start off the sewing process and then did just a straight stitch all the way down the front side of the sweater. And as you're going, you can either remove the pins or leave them in. I actually sew with the pins in. I learned that at the sewing school I went to, you can just leave them in and your sewing machine will just go right over them. There's the occasional time when it might hit the pen, but it's never happened to me. It's happened to me like one time before. And you're just gonna sew again all the way down the front using a straight stitch. And then when you get to the end, to the neckline, or that finishing point just do a couple of back and forth stitches just to really lock in that section and then you can pull out all of the pins and see your finished front panel of your sweater and I love the way that this looks I think that the uh, cool tone gray and then like the warm tone tan colors look really pretty together on this particular sweater and I also leave the tags on there because I think it kind of gives that whole reworked and redone vibe I just like the way it looks when you sew the tags on there too but you can cut them out if you want to and again I did it on the back side sewing the wrong sides together that way when you flip it out it is the correct sides on the outside so then I flipped out the entire sweater here and that is your finished half cut and sewn sweater and again repeat it to the other halves that you cut and you have two sweaters I'm so, so, so happy with how this last project turned out. And all I used was a wooden hanger, some aluminum wire in a gold color, scissors, and some spray paint in a gold color as well. And this project is super easy and this aluminum wire makes it super easy as well. So all I did was take this wire, which was found in the floral section at your craft store. And I just wrapped it around the bottom part of this wooden hanger. This one is from Ikea, by the way, just to let you guys know. And all you're going to be doing with this is just wrapping it around that little bottom section. And as you're going every so often, often as you keep wrapping you're going to create a little peg as you can see here that's kind of sticking off the bottom which we're going to then create a hook out of so you're just going to bend it up and create a hook and these hooks are actually pretty strong like I was surprised with how many pieces of jewelry I was allowed to put on each one and I love the way that it looks I think it looks so organic very anthropology or like 
I don't know, handmade. It has a very handmade quality to it, but it also looks super expensive. Like, like this could have cost like $80 to $100 in an anthropology or at like a craft fair or something. So I totally love the way that this turned out. And it was just a vision I had in my head. No inspiration really from anything. I just thought it was a cool idea. And I wrapped the aluminum wire all the way down to the end of the panel, creating a total of, I think about six hooks in the end, which is pretty substantial. You could hang quite a bit of jewelry off of this. And I loved how I created the hooks at different lengths as well, because I think it gives a lot of visual interest to this piece and then I use a tiny bit of gold spray paint on the hook at the top of the hanger and that finishes off your jewelry holder. Alrighty guys, so those were the gift ideas that I came up with and I hope that you really, really enjoyed them. I know personally I loved making them and they were all so easy. I made all of them in under three hours, like all of them, and I filmed them all, which filming takes a lot longer typically. So you can make all of these pretty quickly if you were to make all of them or just like mass create some of them. Like let's say you wanted to create a lot of sweaters, just go out and buy five different sweaters and then five different sweaters of another kind. Sew them all together, create 10 of them and give them out to all of your friends. You can have matching sweaters, but they're fully customized and they're so easy. The sweater took me like 20 minutes to create, nothing hard at all and the little pillows and the little trinket box jewelry box and the jewelry holder all of them are super cute so i think they're great gift ideas this holiday season and that is all for today's video don't forget to check out my holiday playlist here on the channel that has so many other videos and i will catch you all in my next video i love you all so much happy holidays and have an amazing day bye everyone <laughs>